good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a we've got a good game in for us at 12 12:30. Welcome to the Under 20 Men's Grand Final. We have St Thomas playing Pioneer Blue. Man, it's quiet down here without supporters. Stupid COVID. St Thomas obviously had a lot more hours training together with the uh, Thompson Chauffey situation. St Thomas, yeah, they've got they've got some good pieces too, and they're well coached by uh, Joe Hammond. St Thomas comes up with possession of that. Pretty unreal, like the fact we were in, you know, Division Two three years ago. You know, we were playing Division Two basketball in Thompson Trophy. I remember uh, at a lot of the games, people would just be like yelling at each other on the bench, and it was like they'd just go up so easy. Back then, the 2019 team was like, no offense, but like a losing team. Like some kids just didn't want to come to training because they were just so like traumatized and mortified that you know they're going to get picked on at trainings. Yeah, it was a pretty bad time back then. How did you find Joe? Yeah, Joe's name has been uh, synonymous in basketball and through Canterbury. Uh, he's obviously done a, run a number of programs. When we saw that he was available and we felt that he was the right fit for the, the group that we had, um, we obviously approached him and he, he came on board at school. I took a break from coaching. Um, I was away from it for about two years, but I missed it because like, the basketball community are like my friends, my family, like my people. But at the time, the coach here, he needed somebody to help him out a little bit, so I, I came in to help him out, and that's how I got introduced to the school. Joe Hammond uh, really understands uh, St Thomas's, and he really understands our culture. Um, he understands the power of relationship. On top of that, he also understands what's required uh, at a high performance level, and, and that is a level that our first five um, are participating at. Seeing his resume when he came in, you know, he's won a lot of you know titles with Burnside and Christchurch, gone you know top four at nationals a couple of times. So it was pretty um, cool to have a coach of that kind of calibre to come and you know be our head coach. When I talk to uh, other coaches from other schools, they they think St Thomas basketball is a bit of an enigma. They think a small school. 650 kids and that includes year seven eights how do they do so well and and how do they come up with so much basketball talent they've thrown that pass to the corner and over there quite a few times we've got to get rid of that well, well, gonna hey let's make an adjustment with the zone to go to a two three okay because they're trying to find this guy who is a shooter he's hit one but he's put up about three or four so let's just change to a two three on the zone hugo gonzalez you try and talk back to him, he has this rare ability to improve, like his performance just gets better and better. He's that guy that you'd love to have on your team but you'd hate to play against. He just fires up the team and brings such a, you know, energy to the team. Prawn Tom Peter Taylor. This year he was like our, like our glue guy. He's that hustler for our team. The thing about Peter is when the game's on the line, he just thrives in that situation. Kobe's like our leader on and off the court. He's got a really good attitude when it comes to the game. He just knew how he suited our team this year and he did it. Harvey Gordon is one of my favourite players that I've coached. He's not like a high school kid. He's super mature, super articulate. So he was kind of like a player coach in some ways. So the dude knows the game. So he's a smart guy. Louis Gordon is super talented. He legitimately has a game plan. He has a vision, a vision of where he wants to go. Best work ethic, like best work ethic. 38 points, 33 points, 35 points, I mean, you know, what he's done the whole season. Puts all his passion out into the court, does whatever he can to win. Jake Banks, he's got the school record for points in a game, 46 points. He has this really difficult to guard speed. He's that guy that you, you want with the ball. You know, you know any time you're giving him the ball, he's, he's going to be able to score. Louis Dallator, he's a mongrel. He's straight focused in the game. He's a completely different person on the court. He's a straight animal. He just wants to win. He's there for his teammates. St. Thomas, they are yeah. your under 20 A Division winners for 2021. Pretty reoccurring theme, eh? Just 
you know, guys, you know, um, underdogs, you know, yeah. coming up and, you know, being big parts. Pretty short, really. Uh, I think, obviously, this has been an awesome season for us. Um, for, this one was actually quite important, I think. Like, if you look at the list of what we've achieved this year, to take out 20s, to, to get top four with the Thompson Trophy and to do what we've done with that, uh, come third overall and off to national shortly, it's just, that's incredible. So, couldn't be prouder. Um, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've got nationals. I'm not crying, I've just got some dust in my eye. Saints on three, one, two, three, Saints! Christchurch is definitely the second biggest city in terms of basketball. Five years ago there were probably only a few like real competitive teams in Christchurch. Now we've got like so many, so many like real serious basketball programs. How they held like New Zealand basketball camps shows how really connected we are as a country with a very good culture. St Thomas is a school I'm extremely proud of. And how I'd describe it to most people is it's more than a school. It's a community. It's a really diverse community of uh, not just the students that attend here, but the families um, that those students come from. Our students here at St Thomas's uh, always use the word brotherhood to describe this place. And, and what they're really talking about is how much we value relationships. Basketball's an incredibly popular sport. We've got over 20 teams, um, over 200 boys participating in it. An opportunity just to get five or six of your mates together and go and play on a Friday night, right up to that most elite level. And that's where I think we've seen the biggest advances in our, in our program, based on a really high performance type program, where our boys understand uh, how hard they have to work. Seven or eight, ten years ago, it was about making sure we got teams together, but now it's about winning those competitions. Hey, hey uh, just kick us off today. Not one, not two, not three, but four of our STC boys voted into the All-Star College Park, third annual All-Star game. So, uh, Kobe Northmore, uh, Hugo Gonzalez, Lou and Lou, give it up. And what's crazy about that is like round one MVP, Jack Banks is in the mix as well, which is crazy. But obviously without playing this round, I think that sort of went against him. But just with injuries, Nets is a go. School signed it off, flights paid for, accommodation locked in, it's all go. Uh, it's quite cool to see our name on the list of teams. It's just like powerhouses and St. Thomas. Not saying we're not a powerhouse. Everyone's watching the games. So the beautiful thing about the live stream is that it's actually now available for everybody to watch. And you guys have impressed like everybody because when you get a school for the first time to a national tournament, it's a big deal. What was the team initially like? Um, the team initially was a mess. So, well, when I took over, it was a mess. So we had something pretty devastating, which was we had three really talented basketball players at school and they got poached by the private schools. We basically had a whole new team. So I went from being on the end of the bench to then starting the next year. And it was a bit of a shock how they all left and then you know we had to adapt to how they're not here anymore. We have to fill what they, you know, and play our own game. And then also they were really comfortable with the coach that they had and he left at the same time that all that stuff went down. Like, that's an ugly situation. So the other kids that are left here are left they're thinking, oh, what's wrong with this program? Should we stay? Like, why is everyone leaving? And I actually just really felt bad for this group. And they had the work ethic, they had the enthusiasm, they loved basketball. And so that's when I was like, okay, this is like, I can work with that group because they love basketball, they want to get better. So, um, yeah, so I took it on. I do remember being a little bit worried when he took over because I didn't think, like, I don't know if I was going to adjust, like how he's going to like perceive me. Just different coaching styles. Like no no coach coaches the same. I mean, he's been coaching for a long time, so it had like a quite a professional feel to it, the way we trained. It felt new and it felt better, it felt good. That first season was pretty challenging 
because they weren't doing real basic things. I'd have to repeat myself said simple things over and over and over to get them just doing the real simple things that in my mind they needed to do. Once we really understood that he was like a good coach and you know and he wanted to win and you know he just wanted the best for us. Yeah. So I said to them my teams make finals so from, not, give me a year but from next year onwards our teams are in finals and they laughed like I got the eye rolls I got they were all looking at each other I was really concerned because I was like, if they don't even believe they can be good, that's a concern. So they definitely did not have that winning mentality at all. Yeah, we were kind of at that at that level where we were like, oh, yeah, we could be all right. You know, we're just a, a group of guys, you know, who are all pretty good, but have never been on that grand like stage, you know, that top level of basketball and being like, you know, the top options in the team. The confidence that Joe had in us really drove us, um, and. You know, that, that boosted our confidence as well in thinking, yeah, no, maybe we can, you know, do this and get, get far. I go into the season, we just had confidence that we knew how to play. When Joe came in, everything just changed, you know, like we had it as a job, you know, like that. So we got to go out with a senior team representing St. Thomas's. We had a lot of highlights from the season, from the pre-season, we got to play against Scots College, who had the number one ranked player in the country. They were predicted to like win nationals this year. Like we, we just had no expectations, like our pre-game, just go out there and have fun. You know, we didn't give up, we just kept playing and we came out on top and won. And that's basically what we did the whole year, we were underdogs. That's when I first found out that our team's actually like quite legit, like we could actually do like really well in New Zealand. That set us up for um, going into the season with a bit of confidence, just reminding the boys that we're capable of, of, of beating a team that good um, was quite powerful because I pulled that card out quite, quite a few times. Why do they have two trainings at the same time? It's right. You just got no time this week, so I just had to make it work. Yeah. These boys are playing on Friday, and these boys have tournament next week, so. When I first started playing basketball, I didn't have anybody encouraging or helping me at all. We had an A team, there was no development teams. If you weren't one of the top 10 players at that age, so you had to make that A team. If you didn't make that A team, you'd just fall right off. I had to be annoying. I had to keep on trying to play against the guys that were in the school team and just be like, stand on the side of the court until I got subbed in. There's always dudes shooting on the hoops. So I just found places that I could go, where I could play basketball. Finding those people that I could play with helped you know, sort of level up. That's why I can relate to the guys that don't make teams here, because that's why they've still got such an opportunity playing in a B team. They're lucky. It's easy now. There's no excuse now. My first team that I made was year 12, and I just made the team only because we had a couple kids six foot tall that like left school to get jobs and whatnot, and then I hit six foot tall, and then I got put in. I didn't have a coach that was like, I believe in you. I don't have any of that stuff. At the starting point, the first person was, um, I went to Aranui. We had a basketball academy there. So I went there for my last year of high school and that was coached by Bert Knox, who is the man. If I didn't go to the Aranui basketball academy, that would have been it for me. I would have finished. But when you get there and there's uh, an excellent coach, an excellent competition, um, in high school level, we were really good. So that was everything. I was fortunate enough to make my first Canterbury team, I think, at uh, like under 20s. That opened up because I think, again, at Aranui, like you had to, they were all about improvement. So once you get into that program and meet people that are all about improvement, if you buy into it, you will improve. And then that's when I started making teams. So, and then from there, I played, we used to have a, a division underneath the NBL. So I got into C CBL or second division and then eventually I got a contract with Otago Nuggets. So I played NBL briefly, like a tiny amount of burn in the NBL. So I managed to go all the way through. I actually had a clothing company that made basketball uniforms and I was helping out Burnside High School to do some basketball uniforms. And they told me that their senior team didn't have a senior coach. This is a school that had two and a half thousand people. They had no senior basketball team. And the lady there said to me, we'd love some help. And I was thinking, you know, like just for fun, like I'll help out. So I took a Friday night team 
uh, we're in the intermediate grade. We weren't that great, but we, I just loved it. And I ended up sticking with that team all the way through to the senior grade. And by the time we got to the senior grade, we, were, we won the Christchurch comp. And then I stuck with Burnside for about seven years, seven or eight years. If you asked me if I was going to be a coach, I'd laugh at you because I just didn't think that was ever going to be a thing. Where I realised I could coach was where all that stuff that I had to fix, I wasn't very good, but then I became quite good and I had to figure out improvement. And so I just took those things that I learned from the basketball academy, incorporated that into my sessions because I did it. I had to, when you start trying to teach it to a young group and they click onto it and they start getting really good at basketball, um, it was fun to be able to help out. Joe, he basically built like a whole new culture for the school in basketball. This culture kind of like helps you just win games, you know, building as a team and like playing as like boys and brothers on the court helps heaps and that showed in our, in our season this year. We want to show them that we, we're not the 2019 team, we're not a bad team, we're a well coached like team and we're, you know, we're there to win, we're not there to just make the semi-final and just, oh yeah we made the semi-final, nice. They were there to win. I'm gonna need safety. Tell her I can't snake me. Ray gun on safety. My girl's so tasty. Tell her it's your world. She wants the two-tone spaceship. Blow smoke screen daily. So the stress don't face me. I'm going.